Hey guys, this is a, a circuit that I've already um, gone through once in, in a kind of an extended way. Uh, uh, this is a shortcut version for those who are just interested in how the circuit works and don't really want to see me fannying around trying to uh, explain it at a snail's pace and, and going through my own learning process as well. Um, if you do want to see the full video and it kind of shows my thought processes and uh, all the debugging of this circuit when it didn't work properly, um, all of that good stuff, um, I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description and uh, I'll make sure the two, you know, the other video is easy to find. The first thing is, um, what the hell am I doing? So I've got this little solenoid. Um, basically, I have a need for my aquarium to want to turn um, the CO2, I'm experimenting with CO2 on my aquarium. I need to turn it on and off at night, or I want to rather, um, so that at night it's not uh, pumping CO2 and in, in the day it is. Um, this little solenoid valve uh, can do exactly that. It's uh, I got it on Amazon for uh, a couple of pounds. Um, really cheapy little thing. Uh, it works great. So um, uh, I was going to use that. Now, the the trick is that this thing, you can't just drive it directly from a microcontroller like an Arduino, which is one I want to use. Um, because this thing, you know, it requires a decent amount of current to run. So... Um, I've actually measured this one, as you can see, I've measured it, uh, its resistance at 20 ohms, um, and uh, when I run it at 5 volts, um, if we look at, I did a bit of the ohms law calculations up here, um, so uh, current is volts over um, resistance, so 5 volts over 20, 0.25 amps, so 250 milliamps. Uh, and and I've measured this, and it does indeed give me around 200, you know, it draws about 250 milliamps. That's way too much for a um, microcontroller. So what we need is a circuit that allows us to dr to drive this um, this solenoid um, and switch it on and off using a microcontroller. Now, that could be achieved pretty simply with just a transistor, um, and I'll explain that in, in a moment. You can, uh, you can just use a transistor to... Um, switch this switch the 250 milliamps or switch the 5 volts uh, across this solenoid and that would work fine um, but doing a bit of research I found a, an actually a, a better circuit um, online again I'll put the um, the link to that art the article that I read um, uh, in the description of this video it's a uh, it's a great read um, and has uh, it goes into a lot more depth in, around this circuit and comes up with a few other variants with um, additional features this is kind of the most basic one though um, but the advantage is that we massively reduce power consumption. So, um, what I want to do is talk you through that um, that circuit and explain how it works, and then show you um, show you uh, the, the version that I've breadboarded up. Um, so, first things first, how the hell does this circuit reduce the power consumption of one of these things? Now, as I said, it, it's 20 ohms. It uses 250 milliamps. However, with a solenoid or a relay or anything with a coil um, in a moving part. What you'll find is that um, the voltage required, or the current, I guess the power required, to flip the switch or move the solenoid um, is much higher than that required to then hold it once it's, um, uh, you know, once it's been activated. Um, I refer to these as kind of the activation versus the hold um, power. Uh, there's probably proper terms for it, but um, you get the idea. Now the, the the theory is that that you what we'd want to do is put together a circuit that um, will pull back the solenoid, so activate it, and then drop the uh, amount of current that's flowing to just enough to hold um, the switch open until we uh, want to shut it again. Um, and in theory, that should massively reduce power consumption. Um, I've actually tested this, and you can see that on my full video. This solenoid um, will switch at about three and a half volts um but I, i'm going to use five um because you know the rest of my circuit works on five and this thing's fine for five it's actually a six volt rated one um so that should then flip very reliably at five volts and 250 milliamps but then what i've done is i've used my variable power supply to drop the voltage um once i've switched it to see where you know how much vol how much voltage and therefore how much current is required to hold the thing open once it's been activated um that actually uh, dropped that all the way down to the lowest you know setting my variable power supply would go to um which is 1.2 volts or so um 
and it still remained open. So this thing will, will hold open at, at probably around a volt or so, um, which is great. So um, what we want to do is build a circuit that will apply for five volts at 250 milliamps for you know as long as it takes to hold the to open the, the solenoid, and then once that's done, uh, drop the voltage across this uh, solenoid to uh, only a volt and uh, make some power savings as a, as a result. Um, this would definitely be useful if you were powering this thing off of a battery. Um, you you drastically improve your um, uh, power consumption. So let's have a look at the circuit quickly. I'll just get this thing out of the way. So I've obscured part of the circuit for now just because uh, I want to take it um, in bite-sized chunks. So here we've got a um, 5 volt rail. We've got our solenoid here. Um, there's a proper symbol for a solenoid I'm sure but it's basically an inductor um, and with, a, with an iron core. Um, and I've marked that as 20 ohms. We've got a resistor here and a diode here. So first things first, the diode isn't really relevant to the function of this circuit. Um, this is a, called a flyback protection diode, or I mean there are various names for it. Um, it's basically a magic diode dubri thing that um, allows a flyback path for um, uh, back EMF uh, voltage, voltage spikes that are generated by any inductor. When, when you've got an inductor, um, that, that has a voltage across it, when you drop that voltage through some magical principle that I, I don't fully understand to be honest, um, the, these generate high voltages so um, if you've ever like wired up a relay so that the coil is through its switch you can make it buzz and it will generate massive voltages across the coil that uses this back EMF um, uh, principle or, or, or mechanism but basically, if we snap the power off on this, you get a big voltage spike, like you know, ten times the input voltage uh, or more. So, through uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how, but this diode will allow this inductor to feed off itself or something um, to mitigate that spike. Um, otherwise, you get 500, uh, sorry, like 300 volts or something, or 500 volts across. Uh, you know, in this circuit, which is going to be bad for the downstream components, certainly not great for your microcontroller and um, you know the transistors and what have you that we've got now further on. So, this is a standard feature of a of a system with a that uses an inductor. Um, so it's just it's just shoved in there, but it doesn't affect the overall principle by which this circuit operates. But it is important; you do need it. So. Um, the rest of the circuit then, or, or the rest that's visible at the moment, is essentially just a potential divider. I've already put the value on here, but basically we need we want to calculate the value of this this resistor. Now, the way we do that is that this is um, 20 ohms, we know that. We know that our target voltage across here is 1 volt. So uh, through that we can calculate what the, um, what the value of this resistor should be. Um, because what we want to do is this this potential divider will become active um, once the switch is thrown or once the solenoid is thrown, and so th this is the bit that defines our the current that will be flowing when um, for our hold um, hold pattern or for, for holding the solenoid open. So we do want one volt here as we've um, already identified. So in order to achieve one volt here and four volts here. Um, that's the principle by which uh, potential dividers work. This is effectively one fifth of the voltage uh, and four fifths here. So, consequently, the resistance here needs to be one fifth, and this needs to be four fifths of the total. So, um, that that works out. I mean, if this is twenty ohms, then this needs to be eighty. So, this is four times larger resistance than this. And that will give us a total of a hundred ohms across here, um, with one volt across these two and, and uh, four volts across here. Now, what that, what that does, the, or the way that that reduces power consumption, it's not so much that this thing is only operating at a volt now, it's, it, the, the reduced power consumption comes from the fact that you've got now, between five volts and ground, you've now got 100 ohms rather than just 20. If we had ground here, it's only 20 ohms, and as we saw, you get 250 milliamps draw. Now, we've changed this equation. So we've now got 100 ohms 
So it's actually 5 volts divided by 100 ohms, which is 0.05, which is 50 milliamps. That's a five-fold reduction in um, power consumption just by putting in this resistor um, in here. Now that's great and all, but um, that you know, if we just plug this in now, nothing would happen because it's only enough. This only generates enough power across the solenoid to hold it open. How the hell do we actually switch it open in the first place? So let me just pull my magic reveal sheet back. All right, so what we've got here, um, ignore the bottom half of this for a moment. What, we've, what I've uncovered here is a, um, a capacitor. So this needs to be a pretty beefy capacitor. Um, this one, I, I, I had a 2,200 microfarad. Um, if you've got a bigger one, like 4,000 microfarads or so, um, 4,700 was what the original design that I copied um, came from, uh, sorry, suggested. But um, the, this is all I had and it seems to work fine. Um, this is quite a small um, solenoid. But it does need to be beefy. And the reason is that what happens is when this um, circuit activates, so you know when we basically put zero volts here, um, or, or rather five volts across here, the um, the, sol the 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 capacitor is empty at our start at the start, and um, so current will flow through our solenoid and start filling this capacitor, and you know to, to the electron pixies running around in here this is essentially a short circuit this this capacitor because you know they can flow as fast as they want into filling this um filling this capacitor which means that we get effectively 5 volts across here because current that won't flow through this resistor or or, or mostly won't flow through this resistor because it will take the path of least resistance which is the capacitor um while it charges. So in the microseconds, a few microseconds or whatever, while this is charging, you're getting full 5 volts and therefore full 250 milliamps across the solenoid, which is enough to throw it, which is great. So that switches the, the solenoid. Very soon after that though, this capacitor is full, it's fully charged, and so no more current will flow through it, or, or negligible current flows through it. And so the current has to flow via this resistor which takes us, you know, effectively takes, drops the voltage across here back down to our one volt target for the hold. And it will do that gracefully. So then we've now got our, we've now activated our potential divider. We've got our reduced current consumption and uh, we've got our low voltage or hold voltage across the solenoid. So the reason this needs to be pretty big is that it needs to take long enough to charge that this solenoid has time to switch, which might be, um, you know, a few microseconds or so, um, half a second or whatever. It doesn't work. Um, uh, I'd probably rather have a slightly bigger one uh, than two two hundred, but it seems to work fine. So then, this piece down here um, is a simple switch that allows us to control this um, circuit above with an Arduino or your micro microcontroller of choice. So this is just a digital pin on your Arduino, digital right, high or low. This feeds through a resistor into the base of uh, a transistor. This is just an NPN. Um, I used a 2222A or whatever it is, um, jelly bean NPN transistor. And that will allow us, that allows our Arduino to switch the, um, the relatively high current, for, certainly for an Arduino, the relatively high current that's required for driving this circuit, excuse me. So, um, the 1K resistor, uh, somebody smarter than me will probably tell me, you know, give me a proper explanation as to why you need this, but basically, I believe it's to reduce um, power consumption. Uh, again, the, the Arduino, you know, this is very sensitive, it only needs a tiny, well, it don't need any current here, it just uses the voltage, really, to detect when to turn on on and off. This 1K resistor basically just reduces the current flow from the Arduino when you've got this high uh, to ground through the transistor. Um, don't know if it'll do any harm to the transistor but uh, if, if you don't use it, but um, it's good practice because it reduces power consumption and 
it should protect your Arduino as well from too much draw. Um, so yeah, set this high and the, uh, uh, the transistor will turn on, current will flow, your um, solenoid switches on and then reverts to its hold voltage um, just to or hold current uh, just to stay open. Um, so yeah, it's pretty um, pretty nice little circuit to be honest. Uh, I was quite pleased with it, um, and it seems to work fine. So, in the spirit of that, I've actually breadboarded this up, and I'll quickly talk you through it and uh, show you it in action. So let me just switch the meter on. So I've got this running at five volts, uh, and this multimeter is just on the 200 milliamp range, um, showing the uh, the power consumption of the circuit. Um, Nothing's active at the moment, so the power consumption is very, very small. Um, so, the these are just the leads to the um, solenoid. Um, this is this is set up. This circuit is set up basically exactly the same as the one I've got on the on the diagram. I'll show you on the diagram. Here's our little ba um, back EMF protection diode across the leads of the solenoid. Um, just a little jumper here. Then we've got our two hundred two thousand two hundred uh, microfarad um, capacitor and um, 80 ohm resistor pair. This is actually not an 80 ohm resistor. This is a um, 120 ohm resistor. I experimented with higher and higher resistances um, here uh, and, uh, until the um, until the circuit would no longer hold the solenoid open reliably, and then I just dropped it down a bit. And, and I found that the kind of the optimal value was about 120. Um, which means that the hold voltage of this solenoid is less than a volt. Um, well, I think it's like 0 0.7 something volts um, minimum hold voltage. So you can experiment with your own solenoid and just just uh, uh, tweak the value of this. Just you, the idea is you want to get this value as high as possible so that the overall um, resistance is as high as possible. But if you make this too high, then the voltage across here or current across here won't be enough to hold it. So you kind of have to experiment with that, but. I went to 120 ohms. Then I've got my transistor, um, dead simple between the resistor capacitor pair and ground, and uh, we've got a, the base here connected to our 1K resistor. I've got another one in here, 1K, because the way I'm switching this is not with an Arduino, but with a, a wire that I'm going to move between um, ground and 5 volts. And this, because I'm doing that, this just um, acts as a pull down resistor. Uh, and just make sure that this, when I've not got anything plugged in, is always a, definitely, it's not floating, it's sat at zero volts. Um, the other thing that you might notice was I've got another, I've got another capacitor in here. Um, that's just across the power lines. The reason for that is that I found that th this, uh, when this switches, it, it needs to draw quite a lot of current suddenly and very quickly, and my power supply wasn't able to respond to that change in power demands. Um, so this capacitor in here uh, basically just provides that extra juice, um, you know, on demand. So I highly recommend you put one in your circuit. You, if your power supply's got them inbuilt, then you might not need that. But um, it, it, it stumped me for a while, and you can see me debugging that in my in the longer video if you're interested. Um, that took me a while to figure out. So let's let's quickly test that. Um, but you can keep an eye on the meter down here, and you can see the the power consumption uh, change. Uh, it's in the milliamps range. So Let's just uh, power this on and hopefully it'll work. I just had some dodgy breadboard connections there, so now you should be able to hear it clunk. There we go. And our power consumption spikes and then drops down to 44 milliamps, roughly, um, which is obviously a massive improvement over 250 milliamps. Um, and we've got a nice little circuit that we can drive from a microcontroller. You do need to take care that you can't switch it too often. If you try and hammer it, it won't work because the capacitor needs a chance to uh, drain after you disconnect the um, the power. You can do it once every two seconds or so. Cool. So let's just quickly draw in that extra capacitor on the power supply and uh, then we're done. So that goes in here basically.
Um, I think it's probably sensible to use the same value or larger capacitor here that you did here. Um, it needs to be half decent um, in order to supply enough current. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Um, hopefully that was a bit, bit of a quicker run-through um, bite-size edition for those who don't want to listen to all my farting around um, trying to figure out why this circuit doesn't work and so forth. Hope you enjoyed it.